So let's check out uh, let's check out these comments and let's check out this for loop real quick. So a for loop is going to execute a block of code a set number of times. And this line right here kind of tells you how many times. So what we're first doing is setting a local variable called channel and we're setting that to zero. And then what we're saying is we can skip this for a second right here. Every time the for loop executes, this um, this variable channel gets incremented one time. So channel right here is zero. It executes the code and then channel now becomes channel plus one, which is one. And this right here checks to make sure uh, how many times we want to do this and then stops the execution if we hit those number of times. So let's say this total num input channels is two. If channel is less than two, then we're going to execute the for loop body and we're also going to increment. So whenever this is no longer less than two, the for loop isn't going to be called anymore and the for loop isn't going to be called anymore. And then we're just going to continue execution down this way. So that's kind of a long drawn out way to say that this for loop is going to execute this code twice because there's two channels. Cool. So let's look at the comments. This is the place where you normally do the guts of your plugins audio processing. That's definitely true. You're gonna to wanna to do that in the process block. Make sure to reset the state if your inner loop is processing the samples and the outer loop is handling the channels. Alternatively, you can process the samples with the channels interleaved by keeping the same state. Now, um, that might be confusing when you're starting out, but I'll show you basically what we can do is right now we're doing this for loop twice and we're looping through the channels. But what we can do is we can also loop through each set of samples in each channel. So if you kind of think about it as this for loop is being done twice, if we put any code right here, like, um, I'm going to make a, a variable called number int number is equal to zero. And then I'm going to say, uh, number is equal to four or whatever. So what's going to happen is this for loop is going to process. It's going to create this variable called number, and then it's going to set number equal to four. And it's going to do that twice, right? Once for each channel, basically, right? So we have two channels. The for loop is running uh, once for each of those channels. So this is happening for each channel. And since that logic uh, is the way it is, we can do another for loop for each channel and loop through the samples. So we can do kind of the same thing. This time we can uh, call it sample is equal to zero. Um, sample less than so we're not going to do total number input channels, right? We want all of the samples that are currently in the um, the uh, the block of samples that's coming into the audio buffer. So that is actually pretty simple. Since we have access to this buffer variable right here, we can say buffer, and then we can get the total number of samples in that buffer. And here's a cool trick. If you don't know if something exists or what the possibilities are, just hit dot and you can kind of just scroll through and see what all of the functions uh, or the methods are for that class or that, you know, whatever it is. So how many are there? Not a lot. I'm just going to scroll down and act like I don't know what it's called so that we can do this live time. Oh, here we go. Get num samples. There it is. So uh, we're going to do another for loop for however many samples there are in the buffer. And if the buffer size right now is 256, then this is going to run 256 times. So once per sample, and then we have to do kind of the same thing. Plus plus sample, give it some curly braces. So it's a block and there we go right now. These two for loops are currently looping through every sample in each channel. So anything we put in this inner loop right here is gonna apply to the buffer. So something real simple we could do 
we have access to this called channel data and uh it's a we got this asterisk right here which makes it a pointer and you can see that we're um setting it to this right pointer of the buffer and one thing to remember about the buffer is that um there's two methods that are similar with this name right here we've got get write pointer and get read pointer and what i used to think was the read pointer is like the input and the right pointer is, is the output but that's not actually what it is the read pointer means that you can only read from it you can't write to it and the right pointer means you can read from it and you can write to it because um, what you're doing is you're not actually setting an input and output you're just replacing what's in the buffer at any given time with other data so it's kind of like doing this we've got channel data right here and oh wait it didn't so channel data that should be the data that's in the buffer right um but that's a pointer to the whole channel so what we need to do is actually do some processing to just the current sample in time and we could do that with these uh with an open bracket we could type in sample and then we can set it equal to something or we can actually multiply it by something so what we'll do is uh times equals uh two and what this is doing is it's going to take the current sample that we're on and multiply it by two and if you're kind of wondering why why am i not just saying sample like why am i not just saying sample times two wouldn't that multiply the sample by two well the issue is that sample is actually if you remember it's the index it's the current count of how many times we've run the for loop so sample is basically just an arbitrary number keeping track of where we are so channel data is the actual data so we need to say channel data and then give it a point in time or give it which sample we want which is always going to pretty much be the sample we're on so sample and now we're multiplying the actual sample data by two what do you think multiplying uh your audio by two does makes it louder so let's check and see if that actually works we should be able to build this i don't think there's any issues cool that built so let's go into logic and we don't have any ui controls or sliders or anything so what we're gonna have to do is basically just turn the plug in on and off and see if it makes the signal louder so let's get that let's pull logic up so i'm gonna pull in a loop The loop i've been using for years to test things um let me turn the beat off let me make sure that the audio is working so i turned the beat off let's see if the audio goes to yeah it looks like it's loud though turn it down that should be good okay so here's a moment of truth let's put this plug in on okay so currently we're at plus six db okay cool and now we're back to normal so it seems like it is making the sound louder cool look at that it worked we are some real dsp engineers right here okay cool so that is the basic idea of how to process audio in juice if this was a little confusing you might want to go watch a video about for loops um it's not difficult at all we're basically just saying hey we're going to process some block of code which is denoted by the open curlies this amount of times so basically uh every time the for loop runs our current count is going to increase and if that current count is under whatever number we set it's going to run that many times so what we can actually do right now uh since i know that, that the plugin is stereo i can actually just change this to two and we could change buffer.getNum samples to 256 uh, if we know that's what's coming in and theoretically that would work if that's what's happening in the doll but the problem is you can never you could never know 
just because you have your doll set to 256 doesn't mean that you're always going to have 256 samples. Every doll does some weird stuff sometimes, especially, you know, um, and it's not isolated to a certain doll. I'm going to use FL Studio as an example, but it's not because FL Studio is bad or anything. But FL Studio is known to send, um, what is it? I think if you set your your sample size to something, it'll it'll send it sometimes. Like if you set it to 32, sometimes it'll send 18 and then 14 or some, something weird like that. But the, all DAWs do stuff like that. So that's why it's best to use the actual um, the actual variable that you know that juice pulled in because we know that total input uh, total num input channel should be fine because we're getting it from this git total number input channels and we should know that git num samples is fine because we're getting it from the buffer so we can at least be uh, sure that those things are going to be correct especially in a simple stereo example right now let's do the same thing with a different concept we don't always have to use the buffer oh let me turn the beat back on so we don't always have to use the buffer we can also use an audio block which is pretty helpful so what i'm gonna do is i have on my stream deck i'm very lazy so i have a lot of juice code um pre-programmed in for me to press a button so i'm gonna make an audio block so in the juice namespace and inside of the dsp namespace we have this audio block and an audio block is basically just an alias to the buffer and you can see right here that i made an audio block i called it block and it's kind of referencing the buffer let's go to the docs real quick maybe there's something more i can explain that i that i was unaware of uh, we can go to the DSP right here and we can go to audio block. Uh, minimal and lightweight data structure, which contains a list of pointers to channels containing some kind of sample data. Okay, so basically the same thing as the buffer, but um, just in a different format. I'm not sure what the, the difference is really. Oh wait, here we got some more. This class doesn't own any of the data which it points to. It's simply a view into data that is owned elsewhere. You can construct one from raw data that you've allocated yourself or give it a heat block to use or give it an audio buffer, which it can refer to. But in all cases, the user is responsible for making sure the data doesn't get deleted while there's still an audio block using it. So uh, this last statement right here, but in all cases, the user isn't, uh, the user is responsible for making sure that the data doesn't get deleted while there is still an audio block using it. Now. You might be afraid of that statement, but while you're starting off and we're doing a very simple example, this is never going to be an issue. We can do the same thing where we make two loops, but based off of the block instead of the buffer. So what we can do is, uh, let's see, I'm not going to use the stream deck uh, button. I'm going to actually write it out. Let's see. So we've got four int channel is equal to zero so meaning we're going to start off with our count at zero uh we're going to say channel less than and then now we're going to use block dot get num channels and then we're going to increment a uh, channel cool okay um so similar to this auto channel data, we need to do the same thing, but it looks a little different. And I'm gonna try to remember what it is without looking it up. Um, I'm gonna call it channel data again. Uh, block dot, it's called get array. Yeah, it's called get array of, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought it was called get array of right pointers. Wait, is it just channel pointer? Channel, okay. That makes sense, I guess. 
block that get channel pointer, which is similar to get right pointer channel. And then we're gonna loop through the samples in each channel. So we'll say the same thing. Uh, sorry, int sample is equal to zero. Uh, sample less than block instead of buffer. Get num samples and then plus plus sample. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do channel data sample uh, times equals, let's make it even louder, four. Uh, so let's see if that builds and work. Juice stream intro. Oh, I should have saved after I uh, put this loop in there. In fact, I'm just gonna make it twice as long since the loop is already set that long. All right. Let me turn it down a bit. That's gonna be way too loud. Let me save. Okay, let's put in our plugin. Oh yeah. Seems to be working. Let's close that down. Cool, so that's the audio block version. And there's really not much, there's really not much of a difference between using the two. I always use the block um, only because, which something we're gonna look at uh, in the future, but the Juice DSP namespace has a bunch of pre-made DSP modules for you. So let's look at, um, uh, chorus. So there's a chorus that you can just call and use. So, um, where is it right here? Process. So what you're going to do is you would make an instance of this chorus and you would call process on it. And there's this crazy looking thing, const process context and ampersand context. So all this really means is you're going to pass in a process context, which is based off of the block. So you're going to pass in this process context and then uh, pass in the block as an argument for that. And since all the DSP modules use that block um, as the context, I usually just make all of my stuff also use the block uh, just so that it's kind of similar to the way Juice does it. Um, you don't have to, like it doesn't matter. You could do everything based off of the buffer if you want. So I'm gonna put some comments in here. Um, my DSP block and I'm going to be a good little programmer. I'm going to go to GitHub and, uh, you know what? We're just going to call it initial commit. Push publish, uh, public. Cool. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out my streams over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash doctor underscore bruisin, where I live stream juice and audio development tutorials on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard Time. I'd love for you to drop into the chat, ask me questions live, and interact with me on stream. And don't forget the stream is also on my YouTube at Dr. Bruzen. You can also download the Viator DSP library that I'm currently working on to make Juice development even easier and faster with awesome looking user interface objects and DSP classes. There's also a documentation page for it, which is pretty cool, and you can find both of them on my GitHub. All of my current plugin releases are on my Patreon at Viator DSP and can be downloaded for free, but consider becoming a patron to continue to support me making free audio plugins. I'd also like to share two awesome Discord communities, Viator DSP and the audio visual community. Both are dedicated to all things audio, so music production, recording, mixing, mastering, uh, coding, juice, pretty much anything. We would love to build an active community of like-minded folks who can learn from, collaborate with, and just hang out with and do whatever. The link to all these resources are down in the video description, and I can't wait to see you there. All right, see you next time.